welcome, welcome to Pop Culture Petri Dish, uh, the podcast where we talk about science fiction and science nonfiction. Uh, my name is Abe Epperson. And my name is Christian Ramirez. And we are your hosts. Yeah. Uh, Christian, you're holding a bag. Tell me about this bag you're holding. This bag contains some chips that um, apparently we're going to be eating a lot more of this kind of stuff in the future. Mm -hmm. And because that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about foods of the future. So Mm -hmm. foods. So what makes this future food? This is future food because these chips are made from cricket flour. Oh, so we're snow piercing it up. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today they're cheddar cricket flour, I guess. From the cheddar cricket. (laughs) (laughs) We just talked about butter bugs yeah, on the last uh, episode. Yeah, yeah. So now butter bugs and cheddar, cheddar crickets. crickets. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, so they, so it's just a corn chip. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's it's the... a cheddar corn chip. And then, how is it bugs? <laughs> so, what do you mean by flour? Like, okay, so it's flour. Yeah. That they infuse, made from crickets. Made from crickets. How, mm-hmm. how does that work? Uh, they dry them out, uh, crush them up, and process flour out of them. And you can like do that like they they behave like a grain <laughs> yeah kind of yeah yeah so you just throw in some yeast in there leave it for a while well, i don't think you throw yeast in there but i mean you make a chip out of it oh, okay because they make pasta out of it too yeah so, so it's, it's like, not like you don't know if they make bread out. maybe they make they bread could, i mean <laughs> maybe it's just all unleavened stuff yeah uh which is fine yeah i'm down with cricket tortillas as well yeah so are we gonna taste this yeah all right Got I got one. my ginger ale. Man, we're full of product placements today. <laughs> he he went he went with the water because uh, he's bolder than I am. <laughs> I decided I'm gonna go with a ginger ale and lemonade to go okay. with my cricket. All right, I'm gonna try. You can't it. even see the crickets. <laughs> No, no legs sticking out, no yeah, antennas. Yeah, it's just got little dots. What is this? Little dots <laughs> that make me think that's probably crickets. Maybe. All right. It just tastes like a normal chip. It doesn't. It doesn't. Sure. I think there's... The normal aspect of it, the texture is a little bit more... The texture is the thing that was different to me. Um, it, like, chalky, it, like, breaks apart a little easier. Mm-hmm. I definitely taste, like, the corn flavor. Yeah. And the cheddar is just, like, dust, like Dorito dust. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's corn in this, too. But it's, like, reinforced with crickets, I guess. Mm-hmm. Which adds protein. Definitely has an aftertaste <clears throat> of, like... <clears throat> The shit I don't like at Trader Joe's, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure. trying. I'm trying to determine if that's crickets or it's just like, yeah, they they went like organic with shit or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did go. As it says it's sustainable. Yeah, it says um, it's got tons of protein. Yeah, four grams per serving, twenty mm-hmm. grams per bag. It says earth saving, gluten free, mm-hmm. non GMO corn. God, I hate the non GMO <laughs> thing. Because corn is already GMO. Yeah. <laughs> if you're like, GMOs are bad, uh, go, go 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 read a, song, a little bit. <laughs> if you think that, then keep listening because we're going to talk about that today too. Yeah. So today we're talking about future foods. Yep. And so obviously the future foods, the nonfiction part of this podcast will be referencing ways in which our earth is trying to find more susp- sustainable and... Um, I don't know, efficient. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a few ways we can go with that. Yeah, because there's a lot of things and a lot of non-sustainable ways that we consume food. Mm-hmm. And one of the biggest ones is the way that we eat meat. And because yeah. when we talk about sustainable when it comes to food, it's more of can it feed the population of the future of the world mm-hmm. than it is how much how many people can it feed right now. Mm-hmm. Because if our population continues to grow, when you got 8 billion people, 10 billion people, however many our carrying capacity is, Mm -hmm. that means that we are also trying to feed all those people cow. We got more cricket holes to feed. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. And so cows by themselves produce a ton of methane and it takes so much water to produce beef that it's a more inefficient way than if we are going to get protein sources from things like fi- from a resource base, yeah. yeah, water and food, or even like fish. Like fish is yeah. a less <laughs> is a resource that takes a lot less from the environment than cattle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do we get our protein? Because 
Yeah, because there's a lot of obviously corn is of like a high yield in terms of you know, mm-hmm. um, and there's other vegetables that it's like if you were to s- take that plot of land mm-hmm. and for a season take it every part of that corn and sell it and yeah. s- and how much food would that put on people's tables uh-huh. versus if you did the same thing with every part of the cow like mm-hmm. the milk and the you know like the beef yeah and it's just like astronomically more efficient Mm -hmm. yeah and there's a lot of like speculation about this because right now there isn't that much research done on the actual environmental cost of raising crickets as opposed to cattle Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but we can already kind of tell just because of the fact that how many crickets there are in the environment Mm -hmm. that we can sustain a lot more i think Mm -hmm. than we can with cattle Mm -hmm. (laughs) or pigs or that kind of if stuff. we started only eating crickets, do you think that we would become reptiles? Is that how it works? Because when I was a kid, I fed my lizard. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I fed it crickets. Sure. And there was always there was one particularly smart cricket who, who like got under the heat rock, mm-hmm. and like so, my pet lizard couldn't get to it. <laughs> and so every night I'd go to bed with like the sound of cricket sounds. Yeah. And it was just there to it was taunting me like <laughs> I made it, motherfucker. I'm the best cricket there is. And I couldn't find him. And then yeah. I and then one day I think he died. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. I, I think that we're probably not going to turn into lizards, which is how that originally started. You heard it here first. <laughs> but they do Top have notch. a lot. They Top do. notch investigative reporting. They do have a lot of protein and yeah. like fiber and stuff like that. So yeah. maybe it'll help so us ground up help our bugs, digestion. Yeah. Put some Cheeto dust on them. Yeah. You got a chip gown. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, well, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that they're working on right now. <laughs> Um, <coughs> that we will will probably be eating. I mean, we just ate those right now. But on a larger scale, people will probably be eating within the next like ten to twenty years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first one is bugs. Um, and obviously we got chips, but you can buy pasta and food bars and stuff like that. Um, they're also exploring how we're gonna get fats from bugs by going into stuff like mealworms and black soldier flies. Um, but the debate kind of continues because obviously the better food that these uh, bugs are eating, the higher source of protein that they're going to be, the cleaner mm. that the actual food is going to be just because that's how biology works. That's the better the food source that the thing is getting, the better the actual composition of the of the animal's body is right. going to garbage be for in, us. Garbage in, garbage out. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, So, yeah, those are some of the bugs that we might be eating, Uh, but we also might be eating lab grown meat. Um, And so the way that this works is that scientists are basically taking stem cells and making cow out of it right now. Synthetic meat tissue. Yes, exactly. Um, there's one, there's a company called Memphis meat and Mosa meat. They're patterning stem cells into animal tissue and using it as synthetic meat. Uh, there's a 2011 study that said that the cultured meat would involve seven to 45 percent lower energy costs, 78 to 96 percent lower greenhouse gas emissions, and 99 percent less use, uh, less land use than conventionally produced uh, European meat. This was a study done in Europe, mm. and so they estimate that it's about 10 to 20 years until that is being mass produced. Um, but I mean that obviously that runs into the problem of where are we going to get all the stem cells for <laughs> mass producing just meat? Mm-hmm. Like, and why aren't we using that stuff for medical purposes? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's another possible, uh, one of the scientists in the article that I read was saying that they think that's going to be more like a luxury item as something that's like, Ooh, we're going to try a meat grown in a lab. We're going to try, a a, artif- a synthetic filet mignon today rather than it being something that is broadly eaten by people. Wow. <clears throat> what if you, I mean, that's how you get mad cow disease, <laughs> synthetic mad cow disease. You it's, feed the synthetic meat to the cow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, cause that, that's what it wants, right? It wants the good stuff. It wants those filet mignons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, um, I feed my cows, <clears throat> but this is something that NASA is looking into too. Right. Cause, uh, they're, they created full fish fillets, 
by dipping goldfish muscle into fetal bovine serum. Uh, that just sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, just <laughs> smacks right off the tongue. <laughs> Today we'll be having goldfish muscle, which you can dip into your fetal bovine serum. <laughs> but that's how they grew it. Would and, you also uh, like a cherry Pepsi? <laughs> but yeah, it's a process that's uh, the same kind of process that the fake the the cow fake cow meat makers use too. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. And there, another company is looking to make uh, shrimp out of red algae. Why is it that we're so in love with like making a thing out of? I mean, like I don't know. It's just, I guess it's because it comes from the sea. Yeah. But it's just like, why is it seafood <laughs> from algae? It all doesn't matter when it's just stem cells, right? right? I mean, uh, like that's true. I guess it's not true that like. Cows are like, oh, I got to eat those goldfish. But, <laughs> but you know, like um, they're making fish fillets out of that goldfish muscle. Yeah. That makes sense, I guess. But I, I imagine stem cells don't taste like, like if I had a, a platter of different stem yeah. cells and I ate them, yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh, that's a fine vintage of <laughs> goldfish. Like I don't feel, it's just proteins and yeah. amino acids and shit, right? Yeah. And I mean, the people that have test, uh, tasted it, um, have said that it's kind of bland. It's not very good. But I mean, the fact that we're talking about them working on the flavor of this synthetic meat at mm -hmm. this point and not just, oh, my God, we are growing synthetic meat mm -hmm. uh, is pretty amazing. Um, I like I said, I think the cost of producing it in the first place is probably going to be prohibitive to people who actually want to eat it on a regular basis. I think it is probably that kind of sounds like something that's going to be more of a luxury item mm -hmm. in the future than it is than like crickets, which kind of seem like anybody can anybody can afford crickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got a cricket bag. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just eat it from my cricket trough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <clears throat> that, that makes a lot of sense. So you already take these fairly abundant, uh, yeah. fairly abundant biomatter, like yeah. bugs being the main one, but also, you know, like generating, like we're Xerox copying, yeah. uh, other higher quote unquote, higher forms of, uh, animals, yeah. you know, and just the more complex ones. Yeah. The ones like that are higher start, on the food chain, you know, cause obviously there's tons of bacteria out there. There's algae, which, you know, uh, is not eating, you know, the same thing as a chicken or, right. or, or any bovine would. But yeah, uh, algae was another one. Uh, they said a 2013 study found um, that they can produce a slew of proteins, fats, carbohydrates that make for a good source of nutrients and food products. Um, a more recent study found that some species of algae contain lots of omega-3 fatty acids. So stuff that would promote good heart health algae seems like it would be probably a good thing to keep looking into and in right, investing right. into but at the same time it's like i said this is a science in its infancy um soylent include included algae algal flour in it for a while in their meal replacement beverages <clears throat> but the algae was subsequently blamed for a slew of gastrointestinal problems in consumers because Algae is a complicated thing, and our stomach biomes are complicated. Yeah, <laughs> as well. Our gut fauna is not ready for it. Right. I bet we could train it to be. Yeah, we could figure pills, it out. You know, like we take fish oil and stuff like that, and you know, there's pro probiotics that yeah. you can take. I know when I had my ulcer, they were like, <clears throat> I was like, so I don't have enough gut bacteria. It's like it's more like you have too much of the wrong kind. Yeah. And you, you like you have too much, <laughs> so you're adding more. Yes, we're adding more to combat that <laughs> to balance yeah, it because yeah. it's like an ecosystem. In there, yeah, you know? yeah, we are entire ecosystems mm -hmm. just by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell from your farts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so obviously there's like a little bit of uh, crawling before you, yeah. you know, walk kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and um. I think algae just, I did, when I was doing environmental science classes, I did uh, a bioreactor with algae taking wastewater and producing um, clean water from, from whatever it was. Uh, so that is an extremely good use of algae. There are some types of algae that you can use that will perform that task um, 
produce clean water on the one side, and then you can take the algae and uh, create uh, animal feed out of it and stuff like that mm-hmm. because it's processed and it releases. And um, yeah, uh, algae is the thing that also helps with carbon emissions mm-hmm. because <clears throat> it's it's a plant. Um, so I think, and you don't need a lot of room to grow it. Some algae actually grows better in the dark. It's something that I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of benefits that we can get from algae because you can also make biofuels and stuff with algae. Mm. So that is one that I think we should invest a lot of <laughs> interest into in the next, yeah. over the next couple decades. I want to ask you a question uh, just because it's kind of a broader question yeah. about this specific to- topic about synthetic foods or food replacements of foods that we already have. Yeah. That's something we said in the last podcast or, you know, many people have said many times before the problem is not feed. Uh, food uh, cultivation, it's yeah. food distribution. Mm-hmm. So we already have enough food on the planet for, yeah. you know, seven, eight billion people or mm-hmm. whatever. We can do that. And, um, you know, energy is a problem. There's other things, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like consumption, you know, like obviously we talked about how uh, a cow consumes a lot more to generate like, you know, per, you know, I don't know even what per ounce of protein, per ounce of protein yeah. or yeah. Uh, so like, why are we doing this? And what, what's the, what's the important parts? What are the tenets of why we should? Yeah. Cause we keep saying we should, I want to understand exactly what are the benefits and what's, what's the premier benefits? What are the, the things that really are like the lion's share of why we got. Yeah. Do? I think a lot of the benefits are going to come from the fact that, Stuff like algae and other things like and the crickets and cricket flower and stuff like that is going to make stuff like space travel and uh, planetary colonization and stuff like that possible Mm -hmm. because the more nutrients and protein and stuff like that we can pack into a smaller amount of food that weighs less then that's better for whoever is traveling from here to Mars to colonize. What what uh, do we know what makes like algae or crickets more dense food protein dense than a, let's say <clears throat> a slab of, you know, cured meat like they did when they were traveling the oceans. Um I think most of it has to do with the fact that uh a cow in general is a less efficient <laughs> Right, right, right. Like you'd have to bring less algae. water. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and you and this way you can actually you can breed crickets right. on Mars. With I think that's a great, great point. So that that's like in clo- in the sm- so we are a closed system on the Earth, and if right. we want to take little tiny closed systems like spaceships mm-hmm. and like to essentially be a cedar, you know, terraforming or colonizing other yeah. planets or you know whatnot. Uh, we need to bring everything with us, mm-hmm. obviously. And so space is an issue. Fuel is an issue. Yeah. Food would help. Yeah, the lower on the food, food chain yeah. that we can work with that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, the better. Because I think there's a misnomer because it's like in a, I think depending on your morality and like uh, how much you care about it, mm-hmm. um, I think that I think that a lot of people choose that it's synonymous uh, like with well, we had in order to get this like efficiency that we need to do yeah. uh, to get the meat, you know, at, at your local Ralph's or whatever or Trader Joe's, you need to like basically abuse cows and put them in tiny sure. little spots. And so there's the the moral quandary about how we treat animals and animal cruelty. And I was just because while we're talking about futures and yeah. like sci-fi stuff, I was thinking about like. Would it make if that was our main voting issue for this mm-hmm. kind of reason for doing this? And I'm not saying it is for everybody. It might be for some of you, but like, what if we were to matrix cows? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like or dr- right. drug them up or yeah. like you know put tubes all up in them and uh, but like put on their brain like yeah. this is you're in heaven <laughs> you're in cow heaven <laughs> and they just they absolutely believe it right. Uh, is that, would that be backward in terms of the moral <laughs> conundrum? I don't know. Because it, is interesting. it would be lying. Right. But is lying as bad as what we're already doing mm-hmm. to the animals? Yeah. And I don't know. Someone could be doing it to us is all I'm saying. And it's like, well, then I just hope we have like a cow Neo. <laughs> <laughs> like breaks out is yeah. just like mooing around <laughs> killing people dodging bullets the matrix 2 <laughs>
Electric boogamoo. <laughs> All nice. Right, I'm done with very puns. good. I, I'll show myself out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think in that in that case, if we're gonna matrix cows, maybe we just grow lab grown meat because that seems like right. the technology is probably roughly similar. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So if we're not sp- flying on spaceships, and yeah. we're more worried about in the future, and we're still st- kind of talking about nonfiction in terms yeah, of yeah, like yeah. our criterion for like what makes a future crop or a future food. Yeah. Is it seems to be. Um, let's let's up the genetic genetically modified aspect mm-hmm. of it or let's up the uh the way in which we think of protein yeah um and and do it in a lab that just seems expensive to me but a lot of things are expensive until you yeah. mass you know you once we get to mass production once you get the mass production going you can fucking shit yeah. out cars like nothing you yeah know, it's a highly compact uh complex R&D situation that yeah. you needed to stand on to get there. And that's like right now we're working with G- things that are GMOs. Yes. Um, we've been obviously genetically modifying plants and animals for thousands of years uh, yeah, because everything. we're just finding the ones that produce the most uh, fruit or the most meat or mm-hmm. whatever it is. Um, but GMOs are legitimately the way that we can solve world hunger. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that is making things like golden rice, which is rice that's Mm -hmm. enriched with different vitamins Mm -hmm. and uh, minerals in it through genetic modification that can help feed the entire world with relatively little cost as far as the amount of land that we need to do it by, by doing things like vertical farming where we are stacking plants on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And instead of using building out to make wide tracks of farms. So you just like put, space so it's it's sun from top some from the side some mm-hmm. f- everywhere yeah and then you just build like yet again some kind of cube <laughs> some kind of board cube yes of plants i guess yeah no but yeah we're thinking in uh three dimensions now yeah in order to maximize volume mm-hmm. uh as we know about like i guess a sphere would yeah. be the right answer yeah and there's even like there's already places like out here in Orange County, there's a place called Tanaka Farms. And if you go there when they're doing their strawberry season, they have um, basically troughs that are stacked like four or five high that are growing strawberries. And that way they're not using as much breadth and width of their land because they're building it vertically and it makes it easier to pick the strawberries mm-hmm. and stuff like that too so there's <clears throat> it's already farming technology that's being used right now right and if we then genetically modify that stuff to make it more efficient and to make sure that there's more vitamins in it then it's something that like we talked about CRISPR a long time ago on the podcast CRISPR is a thing that can make it that can improve the quality of all of the foods that we're already eating mm-hmm. just by editing the genes that are being expressed in them. That would be a really cool post-apocalyptic, like people on Zeppelins having sky crops, you know, like <laughs> yeah. hanging, dangling from their boats yeah. or from their ships. That's just a cool little concept. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> no, I like it. And But yeah, that's, that's why like we've talked about the, the idea that people are scared of GMOs just because it says gen- it has the word genetically gene modified it, and that yeah. makes me think of what are they doing with these genes yeah yeah but it's just an ex- an expedited process of what we have already no. done for thousands and thousands of years yeah i would even argue <laughs> This is a really stupid thought, <laughs> but like dogs are obviously they're yeah, genetically yeah. No, they modified are. because we chose the cute ones, yeah. which means that uh, some of the players in the puppy bowl, some one could argue that <laughs> one could argue that maybe there should be some stipulations on exactly what puppies are allowed to play. <laughs> you know, we do it with steroids. <laughs> Barry Bonds is not in the Hall of Fame, man. <laughs> Even though he's clearly the best player that ever touched the game. Just uh, because, he, yeah, he injected uh, some stuff. <laughs> so, you know, yet we have a blind eye when it comes down to the cutest puppy in the puppy bowl. I'm just uh, saying, it's a conspiracy, man. <laughs> it's, it's Roger Goodell, the puppy version. <laughs> But yeah, dogs are absolutely a good example. Oh, I mean, all of our domesticated am- animals yeah, exactly. are GMOs. Uh, it's uh, what was the Neil deGrasse Tyson one? Like, um, 
<clears throat> or you know what's a great example of it is the fact that there used to be the Cavendish banana mm-hmm. and uh, and then there then maybe that's the name of it now but there's another banana like yeah. the, the 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 grand something <laughs> banana or whatever and in the 1950s it's one of those cases where they talk about how very specifically like yeah you talk to the older generation they're like bananas tasted different mm-hmm. they like tasted more full and rich and delicious kind of like when you get like a jolly rancher or like a candy mm-hmm. that is like banana it tastes like way fucking banana yeah. and when you eat a banana you're like oh yeah they're very similar tastes but yeah. like this is just a b- normal banana you mm-hmm. know it's not like a very sweet kind of <laughs> thing it's because there's two there was a different banana back then. Yep. And that's when all of the developments of like banana candies, they based it off that taste profile. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, because it's a monoculture, Mm -hmm. a virus, I want to say, or some form of blight just wiped it all out. So we're like second best banana. You're (laughs) up, (laughs) you know, like, so genetically modified, uh, it, it, usually decreases diversity right which increases the propensity for something like a virus because if it's all the same dna if all bananas are clones essentially then one bad you know fucking you know one smallpox away from just bananas are extinct um and that is a problem but at the same time it's allowing us to develop in other areas of science of how to protect them from like viral strains and stuff like that. Obviously we're always trying to scramble to the next threat, yeah. but like what they've done is they've homogenized essentially the banana so that it can be mass produced anywhere that bananas will grow. They know exactly how to yeah. grow the banana. That's why you get big fucking bananas. And yeah. then also we, you know, make sure that we just like we did with dogs. If let's say we wanted the dogs that had like the loudest bark, mm-hmm. we'd breed the loudest barkers yeah. in the same way. The, you know, these, all these genetically modified, uh, you know, crops or animals, uh, are so that they have the things that we want. Yeah. We're just selectively breeding for the traits that we particularly like, <clears throat> though. Sometimes it's horrible. Like yeah. how, uh, turkeys can't fuck, you know, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah. So if those who don't know, <laughs> uh, that is true. Yeah. We have made, because we love our turkey breasts so much that it literally gets in the way of their junks. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they can't actually all turkeys on like bigger farms, like a, like a foster farms are in vitro fertilization. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Cause there's a turkey there. He's just like, come on, man. <laughs> But he's like yoked as fuck though because he's got like, he's got he's just like a beefcake and he's like I want to fuck something just this beefcakey turkeys <laughs> just got no one to fuck yeah I feel like that was on a cracked article or something there was turkeys be. try Everything to is, yeah. try to fuck things that look like turkeys yeah because they're horny as shit <laughs> and they're the prime of their life dude <laughs> prime of their life they got those huge wings and shit yeah. oh hell yeah <laughs> swole ass turkeys but yeah that's uh we were talking about gmos that's that's just something that we've done forever and that's something that we're going to continue to do and it's it's not a bad thing to genetically modify this stuff because that's, a, oh yeah, if you eat any kind of seedless fruit, that's because you're eating a clone. Yeah. <laughs> they, you don't get. I remember when I was a kid and my, my mom blew my mind with that. She yeah. was like, I was like, if these, this watermelon is seedless, yeah. how does it exist? <laughs> and my mom was like, I don't know. And then my mom like did her research. She's like, oh, it's because they like change it so it doesn't have seeds so that's like it's a one and done kind of situation it's like the mule of the watermelon family (laughs) well yeah and watermelons and i think grapes and stuff like that are plants that you can clone by cutting off branches of the ones that don't that are not growing with seeds anymore and you can plant them and then you have another grape plant or you have another watermelon plant yeah and that's and you can clone um oranges in a similar way like you can you can graft orange tree branches onto other trees you can graft lemon and lime and like you could get a citrus tree that literally grows all the different kinds of citrus Mm -hmm. because they are just you're able to graft branches onto a onto a single tree and they'll stop there (laughs) you know let's get these pigs involved (laughs) 
you know, I want, I want my meat and my potatoes in one <laughs> organism. You know, it's just, it's back. It's just got a potato plot and I'm just like bacon, <laughs> bacon and baked potato, baby. <laughs> Yeah. That'd be a very. I'd take that shit on the spaceship. That'd be a very efficient use of water and such. Uh, of course, I'd, I just have to live through the fact that it would stare at me while I sleep and say, "Kill me." <laughs> Other than that, if as long as I can stomach that, we can graft anything to anything, right? No, uh, but yeah, obviously we we should be making things like virus resistant animals yeah. and virus resistant crops, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, you were telling the Swedish scientist did something, uh, this past fall. You said the first CRISPR meal. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, CRISPR we've talked about on this podcast yeah. is just a gene editing software. Yeah. Essentially. So they, that like some Swedish scientists just to prove that, I don't know that the food was going to be edible, decided to have the first meal that was ever completely 100% stuff that's been th- that they used CRISPR on to make. Mm-hmm. And I guess it was edible. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a less exciting story than I think right, it yeah. seemed. It, it's always every every fucking that's I always they used to ate eat. it. And there was, it was a few fine. people. There was a few people uh, at my last job that it definitely were like. Uh, I don't. I can't really care about science because uh, every time they're like NASA's got a big fucking announcement. <laughs> Wham, 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 you know, T minus 10 seconds to the best tweet you like is going to change everything. And they're like, what is it? It's like, found some ice on Mars, baby. And they're like, all right. And so it's like, until it's right. like the sensational headline of, yeah. oh shit, aliens. Uh, <laughs> until that happens, no one really cares about it. It's not it, but it's a slow, steady yeah. race. You it's know? always incremental. Yeah. We have to have the first meal that was completely 100% CRISPR was used on for it to be this is a factory that produces Mm. stuff foods that were modified with CRISPR and so much of uh, the PR for this kind of stuff is we know it doesn't taste perfect like how veggie burgers for the longest time like Morningstar and stuff like that like I wish they had like a real like honest ad where they're like look it doesn't taste like the (laughs) thing there's beans in here yeah (laughs) Yeah. and like (laughs) Here are a list of things that you get to feel if you choose to do this product versus yeah. this. Here's a picture of a cow. Love the cow. I named it <laughs> Betsy. Betsy's dead. You know, it's like you can hit it from like a moral sure. perspective, but you can also hit it from, look, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Nature <laughs> fucking nailed it with bacon. Yeah. So like you're asking us to nail bacon in like four years. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll have more luck like making a new sun. <laughs> you want me to make bacon out of beans? Yeah, I don't know how yeah, I'm going to do that. Like, but they're trying, and yeah. I still think that we should try that. Because yeah, of course. I think that even if it doesn't take hold, even if it's like, uh, yeah, the, the cricket flower just doesn't, it doesn't resonate for people or people don't like bugs enough that it just never takes off. Yeah. But in doing so, if we do happen to find thing, something like, um, kind of like how it that's why i really liked interstellar's version of that like dystopia where they're like the blight and the sand got in the like knocked out all the plants mm-hmm. and it's just like so there's really only like two plants now yeah. that are corn like, and they have been <laughs> genetically modified essentially pro i think it's hinted at to like a crisper level yeah to and i know they're doing that with seeds like yeah, they, yeah. they're making corn that can grow in afghanistan mm-hmm. in the harsh conditions and like you just throw it on the ground and it fucking grows kind yeah. of shit because they n- need to find a way to use all this area and land mass mm-hmm. Uh, and corn is a very hardy crop yeah. and in interstellar they're like everyone who's a farmer is a corn farmer and yeah. like most people are farmers because you only get back like a third of the things that you plant because the harvest is fucked up because yeah. there's a blight on and it's not getting better and that's so in the face of climate change and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh, developing like everything meaning like all disciplines of like how we do crops how we do yep. sugar how we do fats how we do you know protein all these different things we need to be searching stabbing in the dark because if we find that one fucking thing where it's like there's a fucking fish in you know antarctica that does this crazy shit and it's gonna like all we have yeah. to do is catch like like a few hundred of them and we can just they have something in their genetic makeup that allows us to just like stem stem cell that shit out and Mm -hmm. now everything can be that yeah and so in the case of oh shit uh fish are gone yeah 
we still have fish or something like that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the kind of like preparation game that we yeah, should, yeah. like in terms of game plan, we're, at, we're the people at halftime in the locker room and we're losing <laughs> yeah. and we're like, coach, you got to say something, man. We're getting our ass kicked out there. And he's like, I got it. I got it. Found these fish in Antarctica. No. Uh, so yeah, obviously we should be, R and D is expensive. Yeah. R and D, uh, is a clunky process from a government oversight, you know, like there was the whole cloning sheet, yeah. remember Dottie and stuff yeah, like yeah, that yeah. in like the late nineties, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. People got into the ethical <laughs> shit real quick because they're scared of uh, us going too far and overreaching. Yeah. I think, uh, I think what we should do is we should make sure that the technology is there and, and then we should ask ourselves should we do it? Yeah. But we should still understand the technology. Yeah. Especially like I think when it we comes, need to be able to clone things. Yeah. Especially when it comes to things like climate change, there's no, there's no amount that's going to be too much of our research and technology. Mm -hmm. Cause it is such a serious issue that we, <laughs> that as humans, we created as humans will affect us more than anyone else. So, Yes, use every single tool that we have in our tool shed mm -hmm. and just try anything because if it's going to make an impact, if it's going to make a significant difference, then do it. Yes, absolutely. Also, hopping back to uh, PR, I think it's very smart. I'm sure that these companies have already thought about it. Yeah. But like the people who are making like I think there's one that's like called like like future steak or something like that, mm -hmm. that they're trying to find like the mouthfeel of the tissues and the seams yeah, yeah, breaking yeah. and like they're trying to make like ribeyes. Essentially. Yeah. And they make it all out of basically like soy products, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but they add some other stuff that makes it congeal. They, there's like a fake blood yeah. thing, you know, like so that it all feels like when from, from fork to mouth, uh, it just feels like a steak. And I'm like, that is really cool. Let's invest in that yeah. because I think that that isn't, that's in like fucking bad days, you mm -hmm. know, because I think it's more close to what we're going to be seeing in the near future mm -hmm. is stuff that's easily more sellable to someone at the market. So yes. like we won't be selling filet mignons because that is a whole other type of thing where we have to think about how it looks, yeah, how yeah. it tastes, how it feels. And like right now, if they focus on things like ground beef, yeah. you know, something that is, a yeah, little there's bit, a burger know, called the impossible burger right now right, that people are burger. raving about that say that's, it feels like meat in your mouth and it, like it has a really good taste and mm -hmm. yeah, do that, do more. And of I'm that. sure that if it gets enough, you know, uh, attention and money, like the creation, it won't be a three hundred dollar steak. Exactly, you know? and that because that's been happening for a decade now. Yeah. I remember when someone like the first time I ever heard a story about someone like creating a, a steak in a lab, it was like, yeah, and the cost they would be like, yeah, it's probably like a thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, just to make one, uh, and uh, it's just like so. And then everyone's like, well, then nothing matters. <laughs> and it's like, well, no, go fuck yourself. No, because they're going to improve it and prove it until exactly. they get patented and then they're going to fucking sell it. And, yeah. then, and then costs will come down. <laughs> you know, you got to think about this. Shit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty dope. Yeah. And the last thing that um, I wanted to talk about was 3D printed food, um, which is another thing, another way that people can be used in space travel and stuff like that. Um <laughs> But the thing that I brought was, uh, I brought some pictures of this thing called the Fudini. Okay, I'm looking at it. So the Fudini is a prototype by UK yeah. Natural Machines. Can hold five capsules, each filled with a different ingredient. It can make you spaghetti, pizza, ravioli, or some cookies, among other food items, or awesome shapes that would be difficult to craft by hand. So you're basically talking about like a mini holiday or a mini replicator. Yeah. Uh, that you have to put a bunch of the stuff in oh, to shit. make. And yeah. the shapes also, so you can make like animal crackers. Mm -hmm. They have, that's really weird. They have like <laughs> green, greens that are like dinosaurs. Yeah. That's fucking I think they're weird. probably like zucchini crackers or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But they got like, looks like, uh, what is that? Just like bread wedges? I don't even know. <laughs> None of it looks like what you would imagine. Right. It would look like, it all looks like pretty flaky and pretty samey. Yeah. But I imagine that what's in there is just like normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegetables unleavened bread and stuff. kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, and I love that all the attention that they put, like, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about in the suits episode that yeah. we had, a, a like a month or so back when, um, uh, like the photos of it, like the photographers took time to yeah. like, work on presentation mm -hmm. and they obviously got like 
food for photographers to yeah. come in and make like the ketchup look really good <laughs> but like they also just like on the dinosaur one there's a bunch of greens everywhere yeah. but then they just threw in some like plastic dinosaurs just to be like yeah hey, it's fucking dinosaurs they yeah. put the goldfish in a like a goldfish bowl yeah yeah so it's like i get it i get it yeah they're doing all the things that we're talking about yeah Oh, you can keep scrolling down too because oh, okay. there's one more thing. It kind of explains how it works. Um, you basically have to put food, whatever kind of food it is that you want, in the capsules. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the thing that was funny to me about this, I know it's a prototype, so it'll get better. But the the steps are choose fresh ingredients, prepare food for capsules, in parentheses, cook ingredients if necessary. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just that you fucking easy bake up yeah. at this point. Then you put prepared food in the capsules and you load it into the foodini and then you have to like print them. Yeah. <laughs> so No, it's I mean it looks yeah, 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 yeah. But it is a starting they like, point. They spell it they spell it. it's it's like the um What's the name? I don't drink coffee. What's the name of the coffee that you, the Keurig? Oh, Keurig? Yeah, Keurig. Yeah, it's like one of those. But the K cups. What I don't understand is the choose fresh ingredients. I assume there's like a catalog or something yeah. that comes with it. They, they can just sell you the capsule, because like, I don't understand the prepare food for capsule <laughs> stuff. Where it's just like, we got this box. You put, <laughs> you cook up. <laughs> It's like you, so what do you want today? I would like an omelet, Fudini. Okay, so uh, so here's how you can start by helping me, Abe. Cook an omelet. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. Now what do I do? Put that omelet in me in the box. Okay. And then it slowly prints an omelet. Like I don't like. What does it mean? Does it mean like if you want to use spinach? Right. Or corn, you just have to cook it. You have to like grind like, it up or whatever. Into, so that you can put it in the capsules. Into the capsules. Yeah. So that, so you that have should to be like, a part of the capsule. Yeah. But uh, this is, like they said, it's a prototype. Yeah. So it'll improve. They should have like tiny little magic bullets that you can yeah. like put into the f- food, this, this hollow. Or yeah. I keep calling the holodeck. This, uh, the replicator. replicator. But yeah, that I mean, I like that idea because then it's just you have basically a food processor on top of the foodini mm-hmm. that you throw eggs or whatever into. Then it kind of separates it into one capsule. Yeah, yeah. Then you keep throwing stuff in the food processor, it goes into different capsules, and then foodini prints out whatever it is. Yeah, in like shapes that you can download and stuff. Yeah, it yeah. looks like. Uh, so... What is this thing like nine hundred dollars or something? I don't know how much it costs because it's just a prototype. I right love now. the I love the last suit because they like made it really simple for you. Like yeah. they gave you like like one of those layout, layout motif diagrams where it's yeah. like one, two, three. Here are the steps, and there's like cute little drawings for each of them that are all very Apple yeah. uh, looking. Uh, not the food, the you know electronics yeah. company, and it says the last three is. Does the printed food need to be cooked prior to eating? <laughs> no, and then it goes to the next one. And says no. It has a yes or no, and the no says just go straight to eat and enjoy. And if it's yes, it just says cook, <laughs> and then it says eat and enjoy, which is that bottom line, that bottom like tier. Yeah. If you just take those three, that is literally all food. <laughs> Does this food need to be cooked? Yes. Then cook it. <laughs> and then what? Then you get to eat it. <laughs> That is how food works. Yeah. So Foodini, which is taking its name from Houdini, like fucking ta-da. Their, their big thing is that they're they're like you put it in a box, ta-da. What what did I spend all this money on? Well, we got capsules, we got a box. You can that does some stuff. I think it basically like shoots out pre-baked crackers yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In cool shapes. <laughs> that's what Foodini does. Right, which, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I, I think it's still, here's the thing I like about it is that they're, if you look at the box and you look, and they put it next to a computer yeah. and it looks like a, like, um, I guess like a toast, a huge toaster oven. Yeah. It's, it, 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 like, because they give you a MacBook <laughs> Pro to give you reference. It's like, got to be like, Two like a like a foot and a half at least. Yeah, wide and deep and tall. It's like a cube, and um, I think that they're trying to break into the appliance market, yeah, yeah. which I think is a smart thing for them to do. Is that like if depending on how 
like we do with other appliances. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, for example, I remember when everyone gets that when you go to like college or if you went to college, yeah. one of the jokes that people like to make is that like the parents knowing that you can't cook for yourself because you're a, you're still a child. Yeah. Uh, they buy stuff that they know you'll like. And it's usually very it's usually like a George Foreman, you know, uh, yeah. st- you know, stove or whatever, uh, griddle or whatever. Uh, they, they have like specialized appliances for mm-hmm. a very particular type of food. And there's always a joke because my parents bought me a quesadilla maker. <laughs> so you, and you, just, it's basically just like a waffle iron yeah. in the shape of a quesadilla. And everyone's just like, it only can do quesadillas <laughs> and it can't even do like complex quesadillas yeah. <laughs> because if you like try to put like veggies and like a bunch of other stuff in it, like it's just too <laughs> too thick. It's too thick for the case <laughs> for the case deal maker to hold. And it's just like this is a bad product. <laughs> but man oh man, it makes making that one thing that I like to eat once a month real good. <laughs> it's just a smooth waffle maker. Yeah, that's all it is. But I mean like this is the thing. They yeah. they're trying to infiltrate and say like there is going to be an appliance in the future. Yeah. That you're just going to have just like a microwave <clears throat> and it's going to be for your, you know, kind of like how we have people have juicers. Yeah. People who enjoy juice have juicers. Uh, there's going to be a whole market for people who um, uh, the who don't want to eat specifically like buy a cow yeah, exactly. or buy, you know, like cuts of cow yeah. and just want to be able to throw it in a capsule. Yeah. And eventually it will be something that's a food processor and we'll cook it. It's just... Obviously, Fudini is in its early stages. <laughs> right, right. But it's cool that they're working yeah, on it. I the guess. idea that they are, they're working on it is good. Uh, okay, so we're, yeah, we're already at like full podcast time. I'm just going to run by, run a few sci-fi and fantasy foods by you and see if you would want to eat them or not. Okay. Okay, Klingon food. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see, because they do like a shot of the gog and it looks like, yeah. it looks like, um, I also don't like Thai food, yeah. so it <laughs> what it looks like to me is like pad Thai, but like yeah, like pad Thai made in a hell dimension. <laughs> you know that makes sense. They also drink blood wine, okay, which I'm pretty sure is just blood. Because <laughs> how do you ferment blood? <laughs> like I, I bet you could ferment anything if you really if you're a Klingon. If you were determined. I uh, guess I don't know. I don't know. All right, uh, from Dune, the Spice Melange. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I want food that changes the shade of my eyes and makes me, f- like, kind of feels like a drug trip. Because that's what that yeah. is, right? Yeah. Uh, Frank Herbert wrote it in, like, you know, hippie era, right? Uh, yeah. So it's like, it was kind of like a little psychedelic, so he just, like, yeah. kind of threw in there. <laughs> like, if you're human and you happen to eat it, you get kind of high. Yeah. That sounds uh, amazing to me. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, you have mental abilities. Yeah, and you're smarter. <laughs> I don't care if that shit's fucking cr- cheddar crickets. I'm 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 wolfing that spice down, dude. All right, uh, Lembas from Lord of the Rings. It's the bread. What's it's oh, like? It's, oh, it's the elf bread. Yeah, that like expands in your stomach. Yeah. Uh, okay, so no, but I would use it to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> like the, like the gluttony guy from yeah. Seven. <laughs> Where I explode my stomach by eating like a sandwich made out of Lembus bread. Because he says at one point he says like how like the little hobbit, one of the hobbit guys yeah. says says like, How many did you eat? He's like, I ate like four of them. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's like clearly a joke about yeah. like pot brownies, but mm-hmm. like they mention how it expands in your stomach and eating one little bit like fills you up for like the day. Yeah. So there's some form of expansion <laughs> process in the yeah. stomach. That'd be a cool way to die. <laughs> that hobbit was either puking or shitting like five minutes Oh, yeah, minutes he was exploding. Then. It was bad. <laughs> it was painful and bad. All right. Uh, the fry, fries worm egg salad sandwich from Futurama. Ooh. <laughs> it gives you a parasite, but the parasites, parasites make you awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's nanobots, but yeah. thinking of them if nanobots were worms. Um. I don't want to hand over the keys to my, uh, I, I go back and forth with this Yeah. because I, I, I'd be more down to it if it was straight up nanobots mm-hmm. personally, because then I know what's going into the program. Sure. Worms. I don't know if they have an agenda where they're just right. like, yeah. And then, and then once we've done all these things that you're like hooked on us, we're going to take away 
your happiness. Yeah. Because that also is an improvement. Sure. And I'd be like, whoa, <laughs> I don't have the same qualitative assessment of what a human is as a worm does. <laughs> Uh, but not that an nanobot would have better, but at least right. we'd know like, oh yeah, the we nanobot fucks it. it up. Yeah. And so I'll allow someone else to fall on that sword yeah. <laughs> for our learning curve to yeah. happen. And then when we like perfect it, hell yeah. Okay. I'd eat bots. <laughs> All right. Uh, the pan galactic gargle blaster from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Right. I think obviously this one's just like kind of a joke. It yeah. sounds good. Cause yeah, I'm reading it. Uh, <laughs> Mega gin, which already sounds like that's <laughs> that's a recipe for disaster. Hypermint and the tooth of an Algolian sun tiger. Well, first off, I'm can I just skip to eating the sun tiger? <laughs> I assume it's exactly what it sounds like because it has teeth. So there's a tiger that yeah. runs around on a sun. <laughs> that sounds awesome uh but yeah it's so it's like an alcoholic beverage yeah i'd be down with it obviously uh obviously the way that it's shown in like if i remember in the um in the movie version yeah like having your brain smashed in they uh martin freeman and sam rockwell like do like a you know like yeah it really fucks him up real good Mm -hmm. that i doesn't sound like i would like that so no <laughs> it's obviously it's just douglas adams jokes so. yeah all right uh the white witch's turkish delight from narnia well that's fantasy as well but you know what absolutely yes in fact when i read those books as a kid i always wanted to know what turkish delight was yeah it's like because i didn't fluffy. know because yeah. it's like a very british thing yeah and uh once i found it out i was like that looks good but in my mind i was like it looked like a, like a sparkle candy <laughs> like, <laughs> to me. It was like something like if I just walked up to the walls of Labyrinth from the movie Labyrinth yeah. and just like grabbed a piece of the wall and it tasted like yeah. gingerbread. Like that's what I expected. Okay. All right. Uh, Evil Ted's special cookies from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I just watched this episode. It's got John Ritter. Yeah. Who's a robot. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, but he, he drugs them. It's the same thing as the worms. Yeah. Because he drugs them through the cookies, which make them delicious but it puts you in a trance and mm-hmm. like a calm and uh i'm i'm i mean i've smoked weed <laughs> <laughs> i don't need any more impetus to like just chill the fuck out yeah it makes sense. i'm a pretty chill guy yeah <laughs> so yeah i probably eat them if they're like really fucking good cookies yeah. but i don't know also um, guy's name is evil ted <laughs> So there's probably something else happening. All right. Uh, would you use the Elzar's Spice Weasel from Futurama? Yeah. Bam, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. A blast from the Spice Weasel. Uh, it, it's hilarious. It's not that distant from like other stuff that we do. Usually we yeah. our spices are like plants and stuff. Yeah. We use something from the anal gland of, I can't remember what kind of animal it is, but we use something because it tastes like vanilla. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Beaver, it's beaver anus. <laughs> yeah, and I mean we we marinate in like blood stuff. Yeah, yeah. you know, like in fat. Like we yeah. we butter we put butter on toast. Mm-hmm. How is that different from the sneeze of a weasel? <laughs> <laughs> Sneezy weasel, spicy weasel. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh and this actually kind of links back to something we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. The Ameglian major cow from Hitchhiker's Guide. Mm-hmm. So it's the cow that wants to be food. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm super down with that. That yes. that if there was that, uh, that would definitely traverse into the like. Now it's more of like a pragmatic and yeah. uh, efficiency concern and cr- climate change concern. Yeah, and less of an ethical one. Yeah, because uh, who am I to tell a cow what gives it happiness? It's true. Anything that wants you to eat it. Yeah, I'm. I want to make sure we get it right because <laughs> that might be highly suspicious because it may have just like gotten the words confused. If yeah. It tortures me horribly. <laughs> and I, I see my dead parents every yeah. time you do this. And the last one is, I mean, it's from a bunch of different things like Soylent Green, um, Snow Piercer. People, yeah. yeah. It's people. <laughs> yeah. Clone Farm Long Pig. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. So that's your answer. Uh, so how'd I do? Did I win? <laughs> what did I win? I think you did win. Did um, I win? And I just want to say uh, we're, we're working off of a list called 10 sci-fi and fantasy foods. I'd sink my th- teeth into from Esther Inglis Arkell. Uh, it's on io9 uh, Gizmodo. 
So that was just a fun thing that I wanted yeah. to do. Yeah. <laughs> See did how I, much of this did you I would eat. Did I, did I win more cricket chips? <laughs> you can have them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you passed the morality test, I think. Oh, it's because of the one. <laughs> Where it's like, would you eat people, though? Yeah. Like, I, there's not, like, I mean, you could, if you painted that differently... Abe, is there a situation that I could paint for you that you might consider being a cannibal? Sure. There's probably a yes to that. <laughs> I but mean, Snowpiercer, that, that situation. Unknowingly. And they right? unknowingly, yeah. And that's not carnivore. That's not right. eating people. It's slavery mm-hmm. and feeding the slaves bugs. <laughs> so, no, on all accounts. But, <laughs> but if, I... It would be pretty far fetched for yeah. me to agree with carnivore. Did you pass the test when you took it? Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> was there any ones that you were different? Like, did you feel that? Um, no, I was pretty chill with most of them. Mm-hmm. I'd say. Um, what do you think about the worm? Egg the worm sandwich? egg salad sandwich. I would probably, I, I probably would say yes, and then unknowingly the worms would take over my brain too, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't because you don't have know. agency anymore. But know. I'd be happy probably. You don't know. It's true. Maybe you it have no agency and you hate it. <laughs> like just the worms are driving yeah. and you're just a passenger watching yourself do things in your yeah. body. It's like a nightmare I have every day. <laughs> uh, Klingon food. Would you do Klingon food? <sighs> I don't know. I think it's just it's it's entirely about it could be delicious. It's entirely sure. mouthfeel for me. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't like slimy foods. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like foods that feel like there's multiple textures going sure. on and like like I don't want a steak to have like tentacles and then bumps <laughs> and then this other thing that I can't describe. Yeah. And then maybe just a little piece of meat. Yeah, I would probably try Klingon food. I'd probably try it. Well, here's the thing is if there's a Klingon in the room, I'd be scared of, to death to sure. like insult them like oh you don't want this guy yeah i'd be like uh no i think it's delicious klingons are the better of <laughs> i just already klingons. <laughs> yeah i would do it and if but then i'd worry about if i puke and then he's like i knew it <laughs> and then he would be like and therefore in klingon rules you have to die somehow <laughs> and we have to <laughs> and i have to like look in your eyes as i take the life from you and scream uh, because that's that's totally a plausible organism that also develops <laughs> fucking warp drive. Is uh, f- fucking Cleons don't exist. Like there's, <laughs> I know I was talking shit on Ferengi last time, yeah. but Klingons are they are stupid. <laughs> They're so stupid, and I know I'm disenfranchising a lot of the people because they play like Klingon weddings and shit. And yeah, people love their wharfs, <laughs> but at the, at the end of the day, wharf is. Like, we're lucky that Worf can, like, learn all of the things that he can learn. Because most of the time, he's just a very, very angry, (laughs) strong man. That's true. That's (laughs) That's, fair. That's what he is. That's very fair. He talks about honor and stuff, too. That's very important to them. But, like, their honor is like, I will kill you (laughs) if you wrong me. And I'm like, "Mm, that's less honor and more vindication or vengeance <laughs> yeah. really he's like a professional wrestler but kind I of guess. yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and of course and he eats horrible horrible food <laughs> i do not want to know what a klingon's butthole looks like <laughs> That's, so uh, I hope this food episode made you hungry because we're going to leave you with Worf's butthole. I mean, you could eat a Klingon butthole, I'm sure. Oh, in Star Trek, many people did. All right. I'm going to call us there. This is a long episode. All right. All right. Thank you for bringing your crickets. Yeah, of course. All right, man. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating, so make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans, where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge, giant monster beans. If you enjoyed this content module, please like, rate, subscribe, or tell a friend about us. We love you!